If Tony Stark ever hopes to save the world from judgment, he will need to overcome his own personal demons. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Axe Avengers issue number one, a tie into Judgment Day, and find out what happens next together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the events of Judgment Day number five had left off, Iron Man and a coalition of X-Men, Avengers, and Eternals had all decided to undertake a very dangerous mission, deep inside the body of the Celestial Progenitor to try and destroy it once and for all and save save the Earth from its eternal judgment. In a funny bit of meta-commentary, Iron Man is quick to joke that for a big superhero team-up, he's actually the only Avengers member on this mission, only to be corrected that Wolverine and Cersei are there too. It's just that neither of them have been Avengers in a very long time, basically not since the movie started so thoroughly affecting the comics and the lineup of the Avengers team. The plan remains the same, get to the exposed node inside the progenitor and destroy it like this was the friggin' Death Star, only that's a lot more easier said than done. For a couple reasons, one, the progenitor has shown to be an incredibly powerful psychic that can mess with the minds of our heroes and completely change its own makeup, meaning that wherever the node is, it's going to be hard to find. Also, just like any living organism, the celestial progenitor comes packing its own vicious antibodies, giant creatures that our heroes are going to need to contend with if they want to make it any further. Of course, people like Wolverine are more than happy to have something new to stab and Tony and Jean even have a fun bit of banter while they fight back to back. The gist of which basically being Tony has always fallen for red-headed women who are mean to him, so you know, if Jean keeps this up, they might be dating by the time this is all done. The heroes are able to win the fight with the antibodies, but not before Tony's suit ends up getting compromised and his mind affected by the progenitor's psychic influence. Essentially meaning that if this mission is to be a success, Tony Stark Iron Man must first succeed in his own job. Judgment. You know, at first I wondered of all the Avengers, why is Iron Man getting singled out for this special tie-in issue? Then I'm reminded that Kieran Gillen, the big architect of the Judgment Day storyline and the new Eternal status quo, wrote Iron Man for a couple years. Back when he had the black and gold suit, and it seems that Gillen has some unfinished things to say about the Iron Avenger. Like how his legacy has always been one of death and blood, all the way back in the days of the Mark I suit before Tony even officially became Iron Man, Yin Sid lost his life. In fact, every person that Tony has been close to or called friend has ended up dead one way or another. In fact, they even go so far as to recreate that very famous panel from post-Civil War when Tony stands over a dead Captain America. The progenitor even goes as far as to call Tony a broken machine. He may always try and rebuild himself, always try and put himself back together, drape himself in new armors, but it doesn't change the fact that the main mechanism was always always flawed, always egotistical, always coping with addiction, be it to alcohol or, you know, being addicted to being a hero. Hell, the progenitor says that there have been many times in Iron Man's life, in some cases very recently, wherein he had the power of a god himself and completely squandered said power. Which is actually a really interesting read and deconstruction when you remember that this brand new celestial god was built in part by modeling itself on Tony Stark's own brain patterns, meaning that when the progenitor gets all up in Tony's grill and starts judging him and going for the throat, he's really being extra critical about himself because, well, Tony is the fountain from which he springs. But what was the root of all of this? What made Tony such a broken machine? Well, in a flashback, we were reminded of the death of his parents. Tony, in a fun bit of continuity lampshading, says that he lived his life imagining that maybe it was some sort of clandestine assassination attempt that took his parents from him, or maybe they're still alive out there somewhere. But in reality, those were just the wishes of a sad child desperately trying to make sense of something so senseless as his parents' random death. And yet, despite all this personal tragedy, despite all these setbacks and loss, Tony continues to persevere and get back in the iron suit every day to try and make the world a little better and save someone else from personal tragedy, even though he knows he will never be the strongest event maybe not the most worthy. He is maybe the most tenacious, and it's because of that the Celestial Progenitor chooses to take the final form of his father. Tony has passed the test and earned positive judgment,
movement because a broken machine wouldn't be able to keep on moving the same way Tony continues to. And again, the subtext here is kind of interesting too, that the progenitor chooses to look like Tony's father to talk to him when we know that Tony is basically this thing's father, and by letting him off the hook, the progenitor is basically letting itself off the hook too. Once this out-of-body experience is done too, Tony returns to his team with a full heart, knowing full well that if he can pass this test, well, then that means that anything is possible, right? And so that was Axe Avengers issue number one, everyone, and as far as tie-ins go, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's the most necessary to understanding what's going on in the bigger Judgment Day story, but I did enjoy it for what it was. Killen still clearly has a lot of affinity for Iron Man and seemed to enjoy slipping back in to write the character again. I'm not going to say he breaks any new ground for Tony. I feel like we've seen variations on this story of Iron Man being forced to come face to face with his demons a few times before, but I will say that it actually makes the progenitor a slightly more interesting and dimensional character. And I wonder if we're going to see more of that growth and deepening in the X-Men tie-in and the Eternals tie-in that are next to come. I have to imagine they're going to follow a very similar format to this one. I thought the art was pretty solid, and overall I think I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 7 out of 10. Again, definitely not necessary to understand Judgment Day, but if you're an Iron Man fan, if you're a Gillen fan, I think you're going to find something to like here. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me, and hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.